We talking about talking. Here we go. Uh. Ah, he said he living life as a gringo. Where you question, where you fit, and every time you mingle, they say you do this with not enough that. My rapping is really bad. <laughs> this life as a gringo. Yes, hello and welcome to another episode of Life as a Gringo. I am Dramos, of course, and it is Thursday, so it means time for our Thursday Trends episode. Flying solo on today's show. Uh, today we're going to get to a couple things. I wanted to touch on this for a second now because it's been bothering me and then it's become an even bigger deal since I initially saw it. I had seen it on a couple people's like social media um, stories, like Instagram, and then it just became a thing. The propaganda or fake news, misinformation that is happening around these hurricanes and the relief or alleged lack of relief, just <sighs> more and more said commentary on the current state of our political system here in this country, and that even tragedies like people losing everything they have in a hurricane we still are finding ways to politicize them rather than just being good human beings and wanting the best for them. We'll talk about that. I also want to talk a bit about the Puerto Rico election coming up on uh, November 5th. There are some polls coming out of Puerto Rico and a little disappointing, not gonna lie, a little disappointing. So we'll talk about that and then uh, for some positivity, we're going to talk about a really incredible coalition uh organization led by uh latinas uh trans latinas who have been doing a tremendous amount of work both for the community but legislatively um and just really amazing amazing to see incredibly inspiring so we'll talk about that in army hint this segment but first let's get into some of the nonsense the bs in a segment we call for the people in the back say a lot for the people in the back All right, so if you've been following anything at all, you've probably seen there's been a lot of hurricanes uh, in the last couple of weeks, hurricane activity, um, devastating areas. Uh, you had the Carolinas being hit hard, Georgia being hit hard, uh, Florida just went through one. I believe Texas as well was e experiencing some. Um, let me let me just fact check that uh, real quick about the Texas um hurricane because i just want to make sure yeah um texas was was hit it's just been like non-stop hurricanes just wreaking fucking havoc on various states um around around the country and obviously just incredibly sad devastating uh my heart goes out to anybody affected by this. I mean, it's personal to me when I think about all that Puerto Rico went through with Hurricane Maria or even myself getting a taste of it. Uh, about three years ago, we had a, a hurricane here in New Jersey that just ravaged my uh, my property that I had just bought, the, the town that I have it in and the business that I had renting the space at the time and just my neighbors next to me, next to the building, losing so much. And and it's just a horrible situation all around. And it's bigger than political affiliation, who you're voting for, election season. This is truly just about humanity. I, I can even remember Biden came to the town where I, I, I had my property um, because we were one of the, the towns that was ravaged um, the, the most here in New Jersey. And you had people protesting, you know, against Biden with Trump flags and things like that. And it's just a sad state of affairs that we live in. And I think it's one thing to have, you know, some supporters of, of, of Trump uh, and them sort of acting on their own accord. It's another thing for the person running for president for the Republican Party and Donald Trump purposely spreading lies and misinformation for his own political gain. Just completely 
desecrating the humanity aspect of of we as people come before politics and times of crisis are not times to play partisan games and of course it sets forth a shitstorm of his lackeys running with that narrative be it political figures those in office those that are supposed to be caring and and concerning most for the the safety of of the citizens they're chosen to represent and then that fizzles down into random people on social media spreading lies about the government and FEMA and the Biden administration not doing enough not supporting these people not being able to be reached by the governors of those states and it was all a lie and it it further speaks to the lengths by which some people will go to maintain power and you know i always try to put my little empathy hat on i try to to understand where other people who don't believe the same things as me where they're coming from but as i i sort of end up coming to the same conclusion of how do you continue to support somebody who time and time again proves that he only cares about himself even in the most dire of circumstances like now is not the time to play partisan politics and put your lackeys out there spreading nonsense and bullshit and, and people spending spreading conspiracy theories like Marjorie Taylor Greene about the Democrats controlling the weather and all kinds of wild shit. These are real people, people who lost their lives, people who lost their entire livelihood, right? Their jobs might be non-existent, their homes, you know, all they've worked their their entire lives for gone because of a a natural disaster and, and all they can do is rebuild. Now is not the time to play these political games. And luckily, you did have some people acting in good faith. You had governors uh, from, from Georgia and South Carolina acknowledging and, and refuting the lie that Donald Trump was was spewing, that they have spoken to President Biden, that he has made them aware that any resources they need will be made available to them, that FEMA which is the the government agency that is supposed to be you know reactive to all of these things uh, when when they do happen when these natural disasters happen that they are you know boots on the ground ready to do whatever they they need to do and you know it's it's really again just sad I mean they even they they uh, I believe they made checks available to people it was something like seven hundred dollars eight hundred dollars those who were affected by it. Um, so that they could immediately, you know, take care of whatever they need to, whether it was food, whether it was travel, whatever it was, and then made it seem like, oh, that's all they're doing is giving people seven hundred seven hundred dollar checks and telling them, you know, all right, good luck, make 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 the best of this, and it's all lies. And again, as with these lies, there are real people on the other side of it affected. I mean, you have people working for FEMA who are now, you know, having their lives threatened by by these people who are believing the nonsense of, of someone like Donald Trump and, and many of the Republicans um, in, in office and in power. And again, all of this creating a circus and taking away from the fact that there was a major natural disaster that happened and there are thousands of Americans that are affected by it. And that's what should be the main focus, not all this other bullshit uh, as a means of, of playing partisan politics, you know, and it's sad. And, and I can tell you, as somebody who went through a hurricane under the Biden administration, FEMA was quick. Now, not to say that the experience in itself was, you know, like it was nothing, but FEMA came by, you know, and even though I, again, was lucky enough that the damage was tolerable i mean it was it i was lucky that I had flood insurance first of all but 
you know, I was lucky that it wasn't like, you know, I was having to start all over again. And I was lucky that I had uh, a contractor in the family that was willing to, you know, drop what he was working on at the time and, and come here and, and help us um, repair the storefront so that the the business that was here could, could open up again. And, you know, um, I could make sure they're getting income so that I, I don't lose my mortgage on, on the property. But FEMA was here and was more than helpful and asking me any damages that I had. They were tracking it so that they could send me a check to repair it, you know, or, or replace it on um, whatever was covered under under their guidelines. So this whole nonsense is is just, again, political games. And it is a another sad reality of the current state of politics in America that we are looking for any opportunity to villainize our opposition, even if that means ignoring or placing less emphasis on those who are actually in need. And it's incredibly sad. I mean, I'll, I'll link to this this article in, in the, the show notes, but there's an article that is comparing – um, t talking about Ron DeSantis and him seemingly ignoring Kamala Harris's calls, um, you know, and and sort of making it seem like she was out to just you know get her her name in the the headlines rather than you know being a concerned person in office. But it compared the response when there was a, a major hurricane here in New Jersey under the Obama administration, and how. Chris Christie, the then governor of New Jersey, was very complimentary of Barack Obama and his response and him coming to visit and see the damage firsthand and to make himself available to Governor Chris Christie uh, for all his needs to, to help the people of New Jersey recover. And that sadly, Chris Christie being complimentary of Obama's response actually ended up hurting him politically when he ran for the nomination for the Republican Party uh, for the 2016 election, that they actually used that against him. They talked about how buddy buddy he was with Barack Obama, and used these pictures of of him, you know, shaking hands with Obama as as a means to villainize him as not being Republican enough. And it's just a really sad reality of, again, the the current political climate, and it's one where. Again, I always try to put on like my empathy hat and, and try to see things from, from others' perspective. But it becomes – it gets to a point where your perspective becomes dangerous because you're empowering behavior that quite literally could put the lives of other people in danger. When you have – a person in a position of power that doesn't give a shit about the people he's supposed to represent, you're quite literally putting people in danger. And we can have a conversation about COVID and many of the studies that have been done that showcase we did not need to lose as many lives as we did had we have had a better response under Donald Trump and had there have not been the propaganda that came along with misinformation associated with COVID. And that is an example of what happens under poor leadership, under the leadership of a narcissist and, and somebody who wants power solely for the sake of power and is willing to do anything to get it and, and hold on to it. And this is, you know, the umpteenth example of what the fuck we're talking about here and why this person in Donald Trump is so dangerous, especially because then his lackeys of the Republican Party who lack a, a backbone or a spine fall in line, perpetuate lies like this one. And all that's being done is taking away attention from those who need it the most, those who are actually suffering, those who are actually going through it. it it's really just a very sad, again, reminder of where we are as a country uh, politically. So. I, I just wanted to get that off my chest because I've seen enough people pushing stupid lies and 
idiotic commentary that just, again is is isn't true and it only continues to stir the pot and make us more and more divided as a as a country so i want to tackle that uh i also want to get into puerto rico a bit this election coming up um and it's just i think this election is also just a commentary of like old world mindset versus the, the next generation so we'll get into that but first we'll take a quick break and then we'll be right back some polls have been released ahead of Puerto Rico's gubernatorial election coming up in November. And it shows Jennifer Gonzalez, who is the representative for the PNP party. She's the one uh, who has been under scrutiny via people like Bad Bunny. Uh, he's been attacking her, her po political party. Sadly, Jennifer Gonzalez is... Actually, polling currently, if the election were today, she's polling in first place at 37% with Juan Dalmau at 25%. And he's actually the Bad Bunny-backed candidate. And let me let me kind of set the stage a little bit here, right? Jennifer Gonzalez is a part of the, again, PNP, which is the party that has been in power on and off for the last 50 years, essentially. That is the pro-statehood party of Puerto Rico. And she represents more of the same bullshit that has been plaguing the people of Puerto Rico. Juan Dalmau represents the Independence Party, a party that their stance is pro-independence for Puerto Rico. He represents the new sort of changing of the guard. He represents what a lot of the young people on the island feel. That Puerto Rico needs something new. So with all that in mind, polls were released. And if the election were today, polls released for the gubernatorial election in Puerto Rico happened in November. But if it were to happen today, according to these polls, Jennifer Gonzalez would be the candidate. She's actually leading in the polling at 37 percent with Juan Dalmau at 25 percent. He is in second place as it stands right now. And it leads me to a question that I ask very often. My people on the island of Puerto Rico, what the hell? are you guys doing? What are you doing? What are you thinking? Jennifer Gonzalez represents more of the same BS that you have been going through. She represents the PNP party, right? The party that Bad Bunny has been criticizing, the party that has been in power for some time, on and off for the last 50 years. They have been one of the political parties in power, promising you statehood and not delivering. They've been selling you the same dream for roughly 50 years, this idea of statehood have not delivered, yet you still continue to vote for them and their nonsense. Need I remind you, this is the party of Ricky Rosselló, the governor that you protested until he resigned because of corruption. His replacement, Juan de Vasquez, ousted because of corruption, yet you still want to vote for someone of the same exact political affiliation. And Jennifer Gonzalez was buddy-buddy with someone like Ricky Rosselló. Arms around, smiling in the pictures, loving one another. What are you guys doing? How do you continue to vote and support the same nonsense? And then you have the nerve to complain that nothing changes it. Well, if you're putting the same damn people in office, what do you expect? It's literally the definition of insanity. You let her sell this fear that Puerto Rico is going to become a communist country. It's going to turn to Venezuela or, or Cuba. That doesn't, first of all, nothing like that happens overnight. This isn't the 1800s. There is democracy in existence. That's not how these things happen. Juan Dalmau himself has said he's not trying to be president. He's trying to be a governor. He said he would support if the people wanted statehood. He's trying to clean up the island and offer something different, but you are caught up on buying the same old dream that they keep on selling you for the last 50 years. The U.S. does not want to make Puerto Rico a state. I hate to break it to you. And quite honestly, for those of you on the island, I know that I am a, a New Yorican 
right? And there's so much that I don't understand about everyday life of living in Puerto Rico. So I completely can can speak to the fact that I do have blind spots. But you also don't understand what it's like to live here in the States, how incredibly expensive everything is, how taxed we are on every aspect of our entire lives, how the government has their hand in every single thing that we do. You don't want that. Trust me. You don't want to pay the type of taxes that I'm paying here living in the States. Trust me. This old idea that they are selling you, that Puerto Rico is going to become a part of the United States, and your lives are all overnight are just going to become 10 x better and all your problems are going to be solved. It's nonsense. It is BS. It's never going to happen. They just use this as a means to sell you on a dream to keep getting themselves in office so they can keep up their corruption, their thirst for power, whatever the hell it is. What, I, what, I, what I've come to a conclusion here when I talk to people and get information about the politics in Puerto Rico, it's one of two things. Either the politicians are just completely robbing the people of Puerto Rico blind and pocketing all of their money, or B, they are just complete and utter morons, unfit to run a McDonald's, let alone a, a island like Puerto Rico, and have no idea what they're doing, have no idea how to disperse funds to make the lives of the everyday citizens better, or don't care enough to actually do anything that would make the lives of the everyday citizens better. Either way, it's not good. So why would you keep voting for the same people that are either crooks or just idiots? And on top of that, as we see with the Kino Seyo, these are people that have proven to only care about rich people. And even worse, they care more about rich white people. That's who they want to be in business with. That's who they want to be in bed with. That's why they have sold off the island every chance that they get. Why the hell? Would you keep putting in the same political party and expecting a different result? And listen, I understand there's a generational divide here. Older people are living in this, this fear and, and are still holding on to this dream of, of being a part of the United States. And I get that a lot of the young people are pushing back against that. But somebody has to come to their senses. That or young people really have to make it a point. And I've talked about this before. You have to show up because Puerto Rico is in a very volatile state right now. And you need somebody who wants to go in there and clean house because we know, based upon all that we have seen, the PNP party does not give a damn about the everyday person and is doing absolutely nothing to give the people of Puerto Rico the quality of life that they deserve. Wake up. Talk to your parents. Talk to your grandparents. Ask them if in the last 50 years of us going back and forth and PMP party having plenty of chances to make their promises come true, why haven't they delivered? And why should we expect them to now deliver this time? Why would this be any different? They're not interested in actually delivering because they run on the basis of selling you a dream. If that dream has happened, then what's their political stance? That party is non-existent at that point. They love living in this place of keeping everything in limbo because that's how they get power. That's how they maintain their power. We got to wake up. And I know, I know, watch when this drops and I start putting clips on the internet... Y'all are going to come for me in the comments. Oh, you don't know anything. You don't know. Okay, great. I understand that. But I'm also not an idiot. I'm also seeing what happens here in our political system here in the States. There's a lot of things that are very comparable to what's going on on the island. Misinformation. Uh, voter suppression. That's, that is just not, you know, um, exclusive to the island of Puerto Rico. That happens here in the U.S., in places like Georgia, you're not even allowed to bring somebody food or water when they're waiting online for hours to place their vote or else they, they, they then are disqualified from even being able to cast a vote. 
You have uh, voting districts being changed so that people of color have to go out of their way and drive further to, to, to further, uh, you know, uh, polling offices so they can actually cast their vote. That's voter suppression happening in real time. There are conversations here uh, amongst high ranking Republicans saying that we should change the voting age to 21 because they're scared of the youth vote. Trust me, a lot of the shit that's happening in Puerto Rico is happening here. The problem is Puerto Rico is in a far more volatile state than we are here in the States. I, and I get that. But you have to fight back. You have to have your voice heard. You can't say, oh, whatever. It doesn't matter anymore. It's all corrupt. You keep with that same mindset, you're going to keep getting robbed blindly and never get the quality of life that you and your family deserve. And it's just frustrating. Now, on the positive side of things, I want to uh, let's end on, on a little bit of, of a positive note here. The Independent Party hasn't won before and as what for far as what i've seen in recent history there hasn't been an independent candidate that has actually been giving the pnp a run for their money or the the has has had a chance at actually winning this thing so this is progress but we have to drive this thing home we have to make it a point to show up and make our voices heard educate those who are are being left behind as far as the information and fight for a better future and stop allowing these people to either rob us or just sit on their hands and not do the work of the people while the island just continues to rot away and people from the island continue to leave because they have little to no opportunity to actually have a sustain a sustainable income. This is important. Voting matters. Being informed matters. Doing your part matters. This affects your everyday life. And I, that's people in Puerto Rico, that is people here in the States. Like, it matters. Don't take it for granted. This is a, a luxury. The ability to vote and participate in democracy is a luxury that many places around the world do not have and that many people lost their lives in, in, in the name of giving us this opportunity to participate in a democracy, in a system where we do have a shot at having our voice heard. Don't let it go to waste. It's like a broken record. <sighs> All right. With that said, Let's get into some real positivity here. We'll do an army mi gente segment. Mi gente. All right, on a positive note here, people who are actually taking action, you love to see this. Uh, I got this article from We Are Me Too. It is entitled From Fighting Detention Centers to Passing Bills, These Trans Latinas Are Taking the Fight to a Whole New Level. Now, in the article, they say, For the past 15 years, the Trans Latina Coalition, TLC, has been a beacon of hope. The organization has been a fierce advocate for transgender, gender nonconforming, and intersex Latinx individuals. What began as a volunteer-based organization supporting trans women detained in immigration facilities has grown into a national powerhouse. The TLC is championing legislation, providing critical services, and creating a safer, more equitable world for the TGI community. From legal aid and housing assistance to violence prevention and community outreach, the organization meets the multifaceted needs of TGI people across the U.S. I mean, in 2024 alone, TLC served over 9,541 individuals through their drop-in center. They housed 113 clients, represented 90 asylum seekers, and reached 45,262 individuals through community outreach. I'll take a breather there. The numbers don't lie. They're putting numbers on the board in this whole philanthropy thing. And this is so beautiful. Like you, you think about it. These are, by the way, a lot of this stuff seems so like otherworldly. Like, oh my God, these people are like angels sent down from heaven. And to a degree they are. But they're everyday people just like you and I that gave a shit. And rather than bitching and moaning about it over dinner to their friends, they said, you know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and take action on this and see what I can do. I'm going to organize what I can and see what I can do. And you can see how they've grown. I mean, shit, look at all the statistics I, I just laid out there. I mean, also, over the years, they've not just done like local community philanthropic work. It says TLC has been instrumental in shaping legislation, the thing that really, really matters. 
This includes the passing of AB 1487 and AB 1163 in California, which aim to protect the rights of TGI individuals. So they are not only doing community outreach, which I don't want to take away from the power and impact that that creates, but they're also going to the government and they're proposing and and helping shape legislation that will actually put laws in writing to protect those from their community. And this is what we need to be more of, you know, we need to, to do more of, I should say. And I know, listen, it's difficult. All of us have a different way that we can contribute, different time that we, we have the ability to contribute, different things going on in our lives. But the greatest impact that that ends up happening is oftentimes at the hands of of concerned citizens, right? That's where everybody starts, and eventually it grows into something like this, where you're talking about thousands of people being impacted by this organization that originally just started out by an i you know uh, as an idea from a couple of these women, and it's it's just inspiring to to see, and and particularly when you talk about the LGBTQ plus community. You know, I've, I've mentioned this a lot on, on the podcast, and there's plenty of people having, you know, these conversations in a far deeper sense than, than I could ever, you know, uh, hope to. But the sort of toxic nature of, of the Latin community and the homophobia that Sandy has historically run rampant within our community, it's especially empowering to see members of of the, the LGBTQ plus community who are also, uh, you know, Latinx and are doing their part to provide a, a safe place for fellow community members, right? Because it's it's a nuanced thing. It's it's one thing to uh, identify as queer or or trans or, or, or gender non um, non conforming or however you you want to to identify, um, you know, w- within this this conversation. But it's another thing to then also be a person of color. It's a, it's a you're dealing with the aspect of of all that people of color deal with. You're dealing with the aspect of, of all that the LGBTQ plus community deals with. On top of that, dealing with the backlash from your own community, the, the Latin community, that historically has not been supportive or tolerant of uh, those who, who identify as LGBTQ plus. So it's just, I don't know, I, I look at these things and A, I'm proud of, of humanity when I see organizations like this one and the work that they're doing. B, it's also like, man, what are you? Do- what more could you be doing, right? It, it lights a little bit of a fire underneath me, and not in like a way of I'm beating myself up, like you know uh, I failed people or something like that. But it does sort of remind me that there's more I could be doing, more that I want to do. I guess would probably be a better way to to to, to look at it. That if my reaction is like, what could I do? There's there's definitely a longing to help more and to do my part even even further than than what I have done. And again, it's inspiring to think that, you know, I think it's oftentimes we we can write ourselves off as like, who am I to do this, to participate in these big conversations, to pass legislation, right? I'm just a person from, you know, whatever, a small town in California, New Jersey, New York, whatever it is. Like, I don't have any government experience. I don't come from money. I don't come from wealth. Uh, you know, I might not be college educated, whatever, like all the, the little things that we tell ourselves to, to sort of take away our credibility and why we can or can't, uh, achieve something as great as this. And the reality is there are normal everyday people who are achieving great things such as this organization, the, the trans Latina coalition. And the reality is they, they were started by regular people, just like you and I, who decided to say enough is enough. I'm going to try and 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 make an actual change here and and be the change that I want to see. And I just absolutely salute anybody who ever puts themselves out there like that in that way and, and goes after it and and does the hard work to be a part of their community, to advocate for their community, um, and and to to continue to just help those in need. It's it's a beautiful thing and it definitely restores your faith in humanity a bit, which um, I think we, we we definitely need now uh, more than ever. So so big shout out to them for, for all the hard work that they are doing. With that said, let's tie everything we talked about today in a neat little bow in a segment we call Conclusion Stew. Time for Conclusion Stew. Mm. Man, so I don't want to 
you know, work up my blood pressure too much again. But, you know, in the topic of this hurricane stuff and the sad politicization, um, did I say that right? Political, political, politi- politicization? Yeah, I think I said that right. If I did it, bear with me. Uh, but the, the sad, you know, the lack of humanity, really, the lack of humanity. To look at people who have died, to look at people who have lost everything in a natural disaster that was far beyond their control and that they pretty much had a few days to prepare for and in a few days their entire life changed. To watch that happening and your first instinct is to say, how can I use this to my advantage? How can I make this about me? How can I make this an opportunity to villainize the opposition, my political opposition? How can I make this about my upcoming election? I don't know, man. On a a moral level, it's just disgusting. There's no other way to say it. On a moral level, it is absolutely disgusting and as much as you might not agree with democratic policy or whatever it might be and and, I, and I'm always open to those actual real conversations that are centered around politics and not nonsense or culture wars that that don't really mean much at all as much as you might not support policy how can you support somebody who continues to showcase themselves as a just morally terrible person? And that's what kind of gets me hung up when I when I think about and, and see these stories and what gets me frustrated when I see it go around on social media and like people you know and you're just like, man, like that that's where you're at or morally or – you're allowing yourself to get swept up in propaganda and lies. We're just like taking random memes and speaking of them as if they're hard news. Like that's where we've come and and become as a society. Because this was really easy to fact check. Literally there are television you know, interviews, television, um, press conferences where you had the governors of these states flat out saying, I just talked to President Biden today. He's offered us everything we need. Literally straight from the horse's mouth, refuting the lies that are coming from, from Donald Trump. But people still choose to just stay in their own little bubble and, and be fueled by hate and anger. And it's just, it's sad. It, it really is sad at the end of the day. Now, what's also said, talking about the elections in Puerto Rico, again, people seeing what's, what a political party has to offer, seeing the consistent corruption and just ineptitude at, at being a efficient public official, even having lived through all that and seeing it firsthand, continue to support the same people who have been in power as they've gone through their worst moments. You protest to get one guy removed only to support the same political party on the next election. Like make that make sense. It's just it's 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 sad. And and the fear mongering and, and being susceptible to all those it really is just a, a sad a sad reality uh, with politics and things like that. And, you know, a lot of it is this older generation who just doesn't have a real fucking grasp on reality and doesn't understand the changing world that we are in and how different it is for my generation and younger than it was for them. How much more we're struggling than they had to. And not to say they didn't have their difficult moments and things of that nature, but it's a proven fact that millennials, I believe, are the first generation who is not doing better than the one before them. 
And it's not because we're lazy and we lack focus or we don't have a work ethic. It's because we're the ones who are alive and at a certain age, at a certain time, where the capitalistic nature of our society and our country, the history of it, the results are now finally coming to a head. And it's showcasing a failed idea that was capitalism or extreme capitalism. We're we're just happened to be alive and at the right age where we're actually getting the effects of that ideology. And sadly, it is a failed ideology that only benefits the ultra rich and basically says to hell with anybody else. And and actually not only says to hell with anybody else, but also has no problem with squeezing every last drop they can out of the average person just for the vanity metric of having a, a, a higher uh, net worth and a higher profit margin, a higher, a better quarter for their shareholders. We're the generation who's feeling the effects of that. It's And it's sad. Everything's sad. Not everything's sad, but come on. It's frustrating. Frustrating. What's not frustrating is people taking action. And again, we got to salute uh, this organization, the Trans Latina Coalition, who are not only taking like boots on the ground action, helping everyday people, community outreach of those things, but are also taking it a step further and working with the politicians, working with the system that we have in place and figuring out ways that they can change legislation to actually create sustainable change for generations to come at a larger scale. And and community outreach is amazing. I love it. I want to see more of it. I want to participate in more of it. But when you talk about actually changing legislation, that's where we actually begin to change, you know, uh, our states, our cities, our country um, in the grander sense for actual generations um, and, and countless lives that could benefit from these legislations being put into place. Um, so just, yeah. Amazing stuff. Once again, salute to, to all the work that the Trans Latina Coalition is, is doing. And that's it, man. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Have an amazing weekend. I will catch you all on Tuesday with a brand new episode. Till then, stay safe and we'll talk soon. Peace.